Hi, and in this video, we are going to now actually get down to some code and not just DevOps. If you were following in the previous video, we have connected Hasura local to Hasura cloud. We have connected Vercel's Next.js platform, Next.js. We've connected Next.js to Vercel uh, as well. And in those cases, we're using Git to be able to deploy those to GitHub and those trigger integrations to deploy them. Between those two, we now have a, a integration where our environment variables from the Hasura Cloud environment are brought over to Vercel, and we use the Vercel CLI locally to be able to copy those down to our local repository where we're able to use the same naming conventions that they're all expecting to see so that our local versions will reflect what our remote versions look like. Now we actually want to be able to put some content into all of this and figure out how can we get around uh, working with this data so we can be able to build a project. So let's get everything up and running now. What we're gonna do is launch our Hasura instance again. Uh, Docker Compose should still be running, but our proxied version for tracking metadata is not. We'll go ahead and boot that up now. We're gonna navigate into a separate tab here. Uh, this is our www directory. This one we're gonna navigate into our uh, Hasura directory. And from inside of the Hasura directory, we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and launch this uh, with Hasura console. And in this case, we need to now pass the admin secret environment because we are no longer using that uh, from our environment variables. Now we need to provide the admin secret because previously we were not using that and now we are. So we're gonna go ahead and say uh, my secret password. I'm going off of memory here for the local version. It doesn't like that. <laughs> Let's look at our Docker Compose file. So here we can find the uh, secret, my admin uh, secret key. We'll go ahead and repeat this with my admin secret key. And from there, we now have a version of our running uh, console. We can go into here refresh the browser and we should see that the 9695 proxied version is in fact still running and it is very good we'll go back over to we'll go back over to the web version now and we're going to go ahead and boot up our um, yarn dev which will now be running uh, Vercel for us now we're going to go ahead and actually stop that for a second because I've not yet added my own environment variables that I copied down locally. So I've updated my environment variables. Now I can go ahead and run. And we'll see that we now have a running version of the Next.js project when we switch to our browser. All right, great. We have the localhost version of our of, our, of Next.js, and we have the Hasura console both running locally. Let's go ahead and bridge these two together where we fetch some data from Hasura and put it on the Next.js page. To do that, what we're gonna do is actually uh, go ahead and create some content inside of the data here. And I'm gonna go to my, uh, my pizza here. To do that, I'm actually going to navigate to the SQL statement again here where I can track this as a migration. So I'll be inserting data from my local repository into the remote version as well. So I'll have a, a copy of that data live. What I'm gonna do from this point, is I'm gonna go ahead and say insert into friend, Peter, Paul, Mary. We'll track this migration and call it adding friends. All right, we have that migration added. And what I want to do now is actually be able to bring this data uh, into my Next.js application and I'll just list some friends very simply. To do that, I want to verify real quick that I actually have added this data underneath my friend uh, column. And we can see we have Peter, Paul, and Mary. Great. Now we're going to do the rest here inside of Vercel, and we're going to use a simple fetch statement to be able to bring this data over inside of our project. I'm going to head over into uh, the code editor here, and we're going to head to our index page. 
And what we're going to do is add a uh, function here at the bottom where we're going to fetch this data server side and allow us to render this content on the page. That will allow us to use our admin secret because we've not enabled a public access to this API yet. And we can use the admin secret in a protected uh, environment. First, we'll import our type definitions. And then we're going to go ahead and use the get server side props code here at the bottom. This is all available from the Next.js website. And it's because it's expecting a return value, that's why it's erroring on us. So what we're going to do is first add our return. So we know what it's expecting. In our props, we're going to go ahead and give this a value called uh, friends. And we'll return friends at the bottom here. The Vercel runtime provides a server side uh, implementation of fetch, which we'll be using here. We're going to go ahead and say uh, data. And we're going to await that fetch request. And we're going to go ahead and pass in the URL here, which is going to come from our environment. We don't have to use the next public URL here. It is going to be the same one as our protected environment, but we're going to go ahead and just use this anyways uh, for no specific reason. We could use the Hasura project endpoint just as well here. I'm going to go ahead and use this environment variable. And I missed the end part there, so we're going to say as a string. And then we're going to pass in the actual uh, request here. And in this case, it's going to be, uh, we need to pass in the headers. And so we need to pass in the X insert admin secret. Which is going to be the same process env that we're looking for. That environment variable is called the Hasura admin secret. And we're going to go ahead and use the, uh, the data now, which is what we're passing in for the request. So we're going to go ahead and say the body, which is going to be our, uh, our query here. We'll say uh, json.stringify. Actually, the body is the, str is the stringified object. So we'll say json.stringify. And then in here, we can go ahead and add query. And that query for us is going to be simply the friends. We're going to just test our query, we'll give us a proper naming here. We'll say query and we'll say friend name. We can see all of our results here. We head back over to our code editor. We're going to go ahead and add this now. And this should allow us to be able to fetch this content uh, the way we would expect. So this data is going to be the uh, response here. And we're going to uh, use this in a try catch here. And we will say that the uh, data here is going to be let friends equal await data.json. And we're going to not say await. We're going to simply reassign that. And from there, we can return the friends property. Let's go ahead and test this to see if it worked. We're going to go ahead and come to our main page here. And we can see that we have a problem with the get server side props. So we're going to check to see what our error is. So let's see what our result is that we're getting. We're going to have a look at this result here. We'll go ahead and call this const result. We'll call this the response. I'm going to switch these names around. Response. Result. Data. Equals result dot friends. Dot data, sorry. And then we're going to go ahead and console log out. what our date, our result actually is, but I'm pretty sure that we can pick friends off of that data object. 
and it's not going to be friends, it's going to be friend. So we need to say instead of friends, well, it's okay. We'll just do it that way. Let's go ahead and have a look. So what do we get as our response here? And we need to add in a post to our fetch. We're going to see why this is not the ideal way to do this uh, in the next video. Try this again. Looks like it's working there. Okay, we can see that we're logging out our uh, friend object, which is great. And so now we can go ahead and remove this console log. And we're going to strip friends off of our input here. To handle our typings, we're going to add a couple of additional Next.js functionalities. First, we're going to add in the infer uh, server-side props. We're going to move our function above the page. And from here, we're going to go ahead and identify what that data response looks like, where we give the data a typing here. And we're going to allow this to simply be a uh, record, which will be also an array of those. So that data now is going to be attached as the response object that we're typing as the response from our server. And now down here on our page, we're going to go ahead and say that the incoming value here is going to be friends. And the type is going to be an inference of that data. So now we're able to take the friends object and we can iterate over that here inside of our main. So <laughs> uh, cowboy coding out of the way. We have the TypeScript defined. We have the inference. We're using the built-in fetch object. We're rendering Peter, Paul, and Mary to the page. The last thing for us to check is to see if this actually all works. So we're going to check our changes here into version control. And we will hopefully see Peter, Paul, and Mary on our live server. And as you will have already noticed, this is not the greatest way to actually code. <laughs> so uh, in the next video, we are going to utilize the fact that we're working with GraphQL here to start to use GraphQL code jam to be able to bring in some of this data uh, as strongly typed references and we'll be able to layer on a better developer experience on top of this stack already. Let's go ahead and try pushing this all up to our repositories and see what we get. We've done our push. Let's go ahead and navigate to the Vercel platform. And we're gonna to navigate to the Hasura Cloud platform. And what we wanna actually look at is the deployments on this project. Now this is gonna be up and running. It's not gonna be working just yet because we do not yet have the uh, Hasura Cloud migrations applied. So we can go ahead and open up that link, but we'll be waiting till the Hasura project is uh, deployed. It's now parsing our migrations. It'll then apply the migrations and we'll be able to check this code in. And our project at Hasura is now live. So let's go back over, look at our live Vercel project. We'll refresh the page here. And what we should be able to see is Peter, Paul, and Mary, and we do. So in the next, pro in the next video, what we're gonna look at is layering on some developer tooling to work with TypeScript and GraphQL to make all of that little bit of uh, back and forth with the TypeScript pieces completely vanish and allow us to work in a much more streamlined way. See you in the next video.